Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. It's wonderful to have you here. I'm Zoe. I'm the one that's been hounding you all recently, um, getting you to come and join us, and, and we're so pleased to have you here. Um, just a few little tips and tricks. If you haven't used Remo before, at the bottom of your screen is now where your controls are. All the while we are presenting, you won't be able to pop your cameras on. Um, but when we go back to the room, it's where you can toggle your camera and your microphone. What you can see, however, is the chat facility on the right hand side. Please do pop along, say hello to everybody in the chat. And there's also a Q&A section. We'd love to have your questions. John and Chanel will be answering all of those towards the end of the presentation. So it'd be great for any of you to contribute. There's also an option to vote on your favorite questions so that they get asked first. And um, without further ado, I would like to introduce John to our stage so that he can run through with you the Community Driving School, who we are, what we do and why we do it. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. I can't believe how many people have turned up. It's so, um, yeah, it's, it's quite humbling to see so many people. But first and foremost, I want to thank Zoe for putting this together. Um, you're all part of a community, part of a family, which Community Driving School is. And I know that you will all, all be made to feel very, very welcome. Now, we've got a couple of the pupils here um, and I want to thank them for being so brave for coming forward and talking about their stories. Um, it's going to be a great, a great thing to be part of with, with you all. Now, Zoe is, um, she's like a good Terminator. She's been relentless in getting people signing up and I can see the number ticking up now. So without any further ado, I will crack on with my presentation. So forgive me if things take a little bit of time to get going. I want to personally thank TJ and Zoe. Um, CDS and, and I owe you both so much thank you just isn't sufficient for what you both have done for me in the past 12 months you've kept the business going you've kept me going and it's enabled me to help some of our pupils and in that 12 months one of our pupils has since gone to the police and reported her father for sexual abuse and it's because you have been able to keep me going that that's happened thank you A bit about me, I won't bore you too much. I was born in 1967 in South East London. Um, my father was a violent alcoholic. And the photograph of me, I have a bruise on my right eye, which is where I walked into a door, courtesy of my dad. Um, in 83, 84, after a particularly brutal attack on my mother and me, in which my dad launched a sewing machine at my mum. I had a knife at his throat and threatened to kill him. Um, and not long after that, he took his own life. I then went straight into full-time employment at Christie's the Auctioneers and finished at the London Stock Exchange, where in September 2014, I tried to take my own life. It's something, mental health is something that I'm passionate about. And some people have said to me, what were you feeling? The answer is, I don't know. The, my recollection of that time is comes from people that I know and those around me. Following that, I was, I regard myself as a suicide survivor. I retrained as a driving instructor with a national company where I got to meet some people who were struggling to fund their driving lessons. I could have made them a pound an hour and they couldn't have afforded them. 
So I and a friend of mine came up with a concept of allowing people access to sponsored driving lessons and using a Formula One model in a much, much um, less high profile way to get local people into employment. What is community driving school? We're the first ever social enterprise driving school, which means we're not for profit. You may have heard that term. Yes, we have to make profits. I've got bills to pay. I'm not an affluent billionaire. If I was, I'd be doing this for free for everybody, but I'm not. So we are a social enterprise. There are rules and regulations over what we do with our profit. They go into helping people in marginalized groups. We've partnered with charities so that all our pupils must commit to work experience, education or volunteer in their community. And in return for that, we give them a driving lesson because it makes them more employable. And as you'll see later on, a full UK driving license is required for many jobs that you wouldn't think it would be needed for. I am working with victims of sexual and domestic abuse exploitation and trafficking. I've been working with a homeless man, people in poverty, young adults, sex addicts, sex offenders, people with poor mental health. We rely on donations and sponsorship from the business community. That's you people and people in the community and the wider community. It's not just everyone here. It relies on everybody. Why do we do it? Well, people in poverty are most likely to be involved in a fatal road traffic accident if you come from a poor background. That's not my statistic, that's the University of Nottingham statistic. Unlicensed, provisionally licensed and disqualified drivers involved in fatal road traffic accidents come from poor backgrounds. End of, that's a fact. Instead of condemning those people, I ask myself, why? Are they trying to get work? Yes, there is an element of some people, we might say, not being responsible, but a majority of people can't afford driving lessons in that, in that poor background. I know there are representatives from these areas on this call. Poverty in your area is high. Anybody proud of those statistics, you need to take a look at yourself. There are 32,844 electoral wards that make up the United Kingdom. Look how many of those are in the top 10% in your area. In those areas, looking on indeed.com, the number of jobs that are available right now and the types of jobs that are available right now. And speaking to a recruitment consultant, Anna Leon, who I know is on this call, the second question after asking someone their name is, do you drive? Now, if you come from a poor background, chances are you're not going to have a driving license at all. As you can tell, suicide rates are very passionate and powerful for me. I'm a survivor. My dad wasn't. And there are many people who are not. 19 people per day, every day of the year, are taking their own life. Do you know what one of the causes of that is? It's isolation and exclusion. I'll come back to that in a minute. We're also helping victims of domestic abuse. Well, how do you do that, you ask yourself? We've partnered with a charity um, that looks after victims of domestic abuse. Did you know that the abuser, more often than not, holds the purse strings? The abuser is in complete control. They don't want the abused to be driving. So we're partnering with a domestic abuse charity called Joining Hands, Joining Hearts, because we want to show these people, and the majority of them are women, that you, you don't have, not all men are as their partners as they're experienced. We can give you hope, we can give you a future. When I mentioned about exclusion and isolation, if you don't have a driving license, this is not this is statistics that we asked in a survey that we did. Exclusion leads to feelings of isolation, 
low self-esteem, low confidence, paranoia, rejection and failure, all of which are associated with suicidal feelings. And people without a driving license are feeling excluded. They're also not confident about their future. That, that's a powerful statistic. Again, it's nothing I've made up. It's what we've done when we did a survey. Flip that, how confident are you with a full UK driving license? Wow, that's powerful. It's a mental health tool as well. And well as job prospects improving. And we'll, as you've seen, jobs require the applicant to have a full UK driving license. Here are some of our success stories. At the end of this presentation, I've, Rebecca will come and speak to you about what driving means to her. Please bear in mind that she is a pupil. She does, she's been very brave in stepping forward and coming to talk to you. This is pupil A. His mother died when he was five. Father started drinking, take, drinking alcohol, taking drugs, di distributing drugs. He wanted to get away from the family. And I know there's one person in the room who knows that this family. Pupil A is now away from that family as a result of passing his driving test, as a result of being given the sponsorship and being given funding in order to allow us to help him get away from them. This is Zoe. She was battling poor self-esteem and low confidence because she was being bullied at school. She's now, she passed her test in 2019 and is now employed and on a, on a path to achieving things that she wants to achieve, all as a result of passing her driving test. Our plans for the future. If there are any MPs on this call, I want you to know, no other driving school in the United Kingdom has a safeguarding policy. Why has that been allowed to happen? We want every single driving school in the UK to be socially responsible and be safeguarding approved. We want the government, we want to be that government approved provider responsible for delivering safeguarding training to every single instructor. Currently, driving instructors have to get a, a DBS check every four years. That's not good enough. If you can live with that, good luck to you. We're going to franchise community driving school. Because we're a not-for-profit, we can still franchise. David, on the left of our picture, is in this room. David's based in Eastleigh, just outside Southampton. If any of you around Southampton Way would like to support David, get on the road to becoming a community driving school driving instructor, please contact us. He is almost completed his training, but we want to get him on board with us, helping out in the community. If anyone in this room knows anyone with access to electric vehicles, we believe that we, this is the way forward. It's going to be coming. And we want to be able to teach people in electric vehicles, but we can't afford one. If you know of anyone who would be willing to sponsor an electric vehicle, please let us know. You can sign up as a member for as little as £10 a month. Being a member, we've added on that you get benefits, you get discounts on a lot of this on all the points indicated here and we are talking to additional businesses but most importantly that £10 will give hope it will give confidence and it will give a future to someone in your community you're going to meet Chanel Drew very shortly she's agreed to become our first ambassador what she's been through she makes her the ideal ambassador for us and for what we want to achieve and I can only add that from my perspective Chanel you inspire me as much as the pupils. I want to thank all of you for being here this morning, giving up your lunchtime. You are the true heroes, but most importantly, we're stronger together. I'd like to ask Becca to join us.
Rebecca, if you're having trouble, can you pop a message in the chat for me? Okay, Rebecca's having trouble. Um, let's move to Chanel and we will try and get Rebecca in just a little bit later in the presentation. Perfect. Hello, everyone. My name is Chanel Drew. I'm a British racing driver and I'm the ambassador for the Community Driving School. So a little bit of background as to why I chose motorsport. From a very young age, from the age of about two, I didn't play with Barbie dolls and girls worlds. I always had little toy cars and a little car mat. And that was my absolute dream toy as a child. And I'd spend hours on end playing with that. My first words weren't mom and dad. My first words were BMW, Jaguar, Ford. And it would turn a supermarket shopping trip for my parents into about a two hour commentary in the car park as to what cars are all parked up, which uh, I can imagine was quite annoying at times. <laughs> So it was clear I had a passion from a very young age and it was a school teacher who ignited this dream of mine. So my school books were always plastered in pictures of cars, uh, Lamborghinis, Ferraris. I just had that passion and top gear all the time on the telly when I was younger. My school teacher had a brother who used to race cars at a championship league called the Trickle or Trophy. And he gave me the opportunity after noticing one of my school books to go along and help volunteer at the race weekends. And he said to me, I want to help you. I want to give you that step up. I can see you've got a passion. Follow that and follow your dream. So volunteering all my weekends, helping the team, I eventually started joining multiple motorsport teams and learning skills from washing wheels to mechanical fixtures on the cars. And this just quite wasn't enough for me. I wanted more, I wanted to grow. And I knew where I wanted to be, and that was in that driving seat. So on my 14th birthday, my father gave me a birthday present, and it was just for a little bit of fun. And he said, OK, you can borrow my car for the day, which was very brave. <laughs> and you can go around one of the local tracks called Landau for a bit of fun. I had to have a linen instructor with me who was involved within racing, and it was just a day out for a nice birthday present. And it turned out to get pretty crazy from here. After a couple of laps on track, I ended up beating the lap time, despite never really driven before, of an experienced track driver in a BMW M3, despite the fact I was in an MX-5. Now, this was when alarm bells started ringing, I think, for the instructor and for my dad to say, we need to do something here. We need to push this further. We need to get Chanel racing. And this was where I really wanted to be. I'd always watched it on the telly. I'd never quite thought it was possible. But I was very, very lucky to have a father who was very supportive in the way that he's always told me to chase my dreams, no matter the odds. Now, I had two odds that I faced. Number one, I don't come from a rich background. I don't come from a wealthy background like the likes of all the other motorsport racers. I very much come from a normal house in Bristol and we purely rely on sponsorship in order to get ourselves out onto the grid. And number two, I'm a female in a male-dominated world and that has proved to be very difficult over the years of racing. So my father sold his car to kickstart this dream. He sold the MX-5 and we bought a Saxo race car. And I can remember sat on the driveway looking at that car thinking, oh my gosh, how are we going to get through a season? Just me, my dad from a normal house in Bristol up against the world. But we did it. We were lucky enough to come across Daniel, who was my first sponsor. And he helped me in the Junior Slim Car Championship. Um, to get onto the grid. And I remember our first day turning up, it was my father and I in our little car and a picnic blanket. We turned up and we parked up against a millionaire's motorhome who was gonna be one of my rivals on the track. And th that was quite daunting to turn up with to begin with, thinking, okay, I don't stand a chance here. But putting all that behind me, it was a very successful season. And despite having the smallest budget on the grid and not the support of a team like all the other drivers, we made it up to midway through the grid. We, we were fighting and we were getting our name out there to say, there's a young female in this car and she knows what she's doing. She can drive despite all of these setbacks. And it was my second season where I was lucky enough to be picked up by a team and we decided to move on to the Michelin Clio Cup. And Daniel came with us and he helped us for this season. It was my first season up against adults, despite only being 15 to 16 years old at the time. Um, we ended up coming out of that championship 
as vice champion, which was very unexpected, despite only being very, very young and being up against seasoned racing drivers. So it was a really comforting season for us to know that, yeah, there is this talent here. We're still here. We're still going. But it wasn't easy along the way. The sexism I faced within motorsport has definitely been a setback. So I decided after my Clear Cup season to start my own instructing business. And I go around the country instructing people in supercars and as well as other race cars and help them improve on their driving skills. And this is where I think one of the most difficult moments in my motorsport career was going to affect me. So when I first started out, the mechanic in job, the volunteering, you get the odd comment such as, shouldn't you be under the bonnet, not on top of it? Or things you can laugh off. But there is a line that was crossed when we moved to the Clio Cup where my teammate, he was a male who'd been involved with motorsport for quite a long time. And I think having a young female come up to the, to the grid and become a threat was quite difficult for him to take in. And it did affect my season and it did make it very difficult on and off track in order to get those results. However, it was in my instructing career where on my first ever day of work, I was 17 years old, I turned up and I was sexually abused by a man on my first day of work. So we were walking to the Porsche and because I was a woman, he made comments such as, you're my instructor? Oh, but I want one of those people. Oh, if I was 30 years younger, I would have you. And then it went a little bit further which was when the line was crossed for me and I realised that something needs to be done here, something needs to change in motorsport. So to give you a couple of facts, I'm by no means a feminist. All my support over the years has been male support. All my sponsorship has been from the males. However, there are some aspects of motorsport in which mean women have to work harder. So number one, I've been looking for a race suit recently. When I first started out, there were no race suits for women. Now there's only one or two options and to which they are extremely expensive. So in motorsport, that's immediately a setback. If you're a female and you want to get a suit that fits, you've either got the choice of one or two of the low end suits, whereas men have the choice of hundreds, or you have to pay thousands of pounds to get a tailored suit because there just isn't the market for female suits because there aren't many women in motorsport. Women are 47% more likely to die in a car crash because all the safety features are built for men. As well as that, we have 30% less muscle in our upper body. So that means when we're out on track, I have to work hard. I have to work that 30% 30, 30 harder than the man does to get that car around that corner because I physically don't have the muscular upper body strength. And this is why I have to train regularly in order to make sure that that doesn't set me back on the track. In 1960 to 1990, there have only ever been five female Formula One drivers versus 822 males. And there hasn't been a single female since. And this needs to change. This is where I want to come into motorsport and make a difference. So when I met John from Community Driving School, I met him through Alexander, who helps me out finding partners for my season. Hearing the stories of the students, and the odds they faced to be who they are today made me think I have to get involved because just like I faced situations in my career and have had to push through, they've had similar or different situations in which they've had to learn how to adapt to. So this year, I'll be racing within one of the biggest forms of motorsport in my career, which will be the mini challenge, which is on the Toka package, one of the UK's largest forms of motorsport on the British touring cars. I'm very excited for this. It's going to be televised live on ITV, which is phenomenal for me to get my name out there. But not only for that, it's to carry the community driving school message with me. So we are going to be allowing students from CDS who have suffered or been victims of abuse or marginalized backgrounds. They're going to be coming along, gaining confidence, learning new skill sets, as well as inspiring myself also. So we can share our similar circumstances and learn from each other. So this is where we really need that support. I purely rely on sponsorship. I don't come from a wealthy background like most of the other races. So for me to get out onto the track, I have to sit through meetings and calls and I have to work to get to where I am. 
And this is where we need your support for sponsorship in order to get us on the grid this year. So if anyone out there is open to helping us as a project with not only CVS, but a young female tackle in a male dominated world, please do get involved because there's not many of us out there. And this is definitely a section that needs to change within the motorsport arena. So something I'm really pleased to announce today is there is a very inspirational young girl who is in, on this call called Sophie. Now, what Sophie's been through, and after hearing her story, she inspires me because she has been through hell and back, but she carries on and she uses her situation to change the world and to drive others, just like I want to do in motorsport, to make people think about when their dream becomes unrealistic to stop that so when your dream stops becoming a reality you need to turn around and think i have to keep following this just because things are getting tough we must go on and this is what sophie carries her message across when things go tough you've got to keep going you've got to show others that it's okay so i'm really pleased today to invite sophie to talk to you all a bit about herself and what driving and community driving school has done for her and we are pleased to announce that we'll be naming the race car this year after Sophie. Hi, Chanel. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so my name is Sophie, as Chanel said. Um, the beginning part of my story isn't very a nice one. So my journey with mental health started when I was about 16. I was extremely depressed, extremely anxious. Um, luckily, I managed to access help, but that's not the case for everybody. Um, for the past six years, I've volunteered helping young children, age range from about 11 to 16, um, fight through some really tough issues that they're going through, like sexual abuse, domestic abuse, anxiety and depression, um, all bits like that. But my journey with mental health doesn't stop there. So the beginning of last March, my little sister Lucy committed suicide, um, which was really quite tough. Um, and then in November, my best friend committed suicide. So I'm now determined to get that message out there that the help isn't where it needs to be and CDS is helping me do that. So when I get in that car and I get behind that driving seat, everything just stops. Um, it lets me be in that moment and, let, and it lets me be me and it lets me forget all of the past troubles that I've had to go through and that I'm helping other people go through. Um, it's not just about license for me cds is helping me travel the county travel the city travel the country and shout the message from the rooftops that there is more to life out there than what meets the eye and we're a, we're a huge family and cds has really helped me get that message out there to show people that mental health isn't what you think it is and that it really is tough. CDS's message will always resonate with me and I'll always be a big part of CDS. Thank you, Sophie. No, it's just amazing to hear the story. And I think if anyone's out there that can support, please do, because it's just that little bit of help that we need in order to change society, change the world and carry this really important message that is missing in motorsport and is missing within driving schools across the UK. Thank you very much to John and to Chanel and Sophie. I'd like to try and get Rebecca back up on stage for you um, as I think we've resolved her technical issues. Um, Rebecca, if you'd like to try and join me now. Okay, I think we're still having some problems. Um, I'd like to welcome John and Chanel back on stage. I will then be putting the questions that you've all put into the Q&A to them so that we can answer those for you. If anybody has any more questions, please feel free to keep them coming in the Q&A section and we will ask them for you live on air. So one of the biggest questions that we've had come up in the Q&A guys is how can we support? How can we get involved? And that question is for John. Um, yeah, there is a link to our website, which I believe is on the main screen. Um, sorry, you're going to have to... 
On the main screen, um, in the middle of the floor, we have a link to the CDS website, and that is going to tell you all the wonderful ways that you can get involved with us, whether that is for being a sponsorship, um, for becoming a member, and um, not only are you helping us, but you will also receive all those wonderful benefits that John showed you earlier, um, which is just fantastic. We are looking for businesses who want to give something back to our members, and that's really, really important. Um, so anyone who has a business that is able to contribute, we'd love to speak to you. Um, but we're also able to offer sponsorship on our vehicles. So anybody who is based in Kent, we have vehicles traveling Kent day in, day out when, when the, the restrictions allow us to do so anyway. Um, and we can advertise your business on the side of the car, on the front, the back. There are options available to everybody. Please do look me up in the room afterwards and I can tell you more about that. There are some questions for you, Chanel. So, Chanel, what can be done to promote and forge a way for more female racing drivers getting into and achieving their dreams, whether that's in the World Rally Championship or Formula One? And that question comes from Grant. I think that's a very good question. And I think the problem lies in role models. When I, when I was growing up, I didn't have a role model to look up to, apart from Lewis Hamilton or Jensen Button, but there wasn't another female. And I think supporting and promoting a female such as myself in the motorsport ladder now for those young girls who are coming up the, up the ladder is the most important thing to do. And the talk is there about Formula One and you've got the W Series. So there's help within the single seaters um, to move women up the ranks. But within the British Touring Car Championship, which is my ultimate dream goal, there is that lack of support for women. There aren't many women on that grid. And, and this is where the gap in the motorsport market is for a strong female to push through. So I definitely think it lies within role models being on the BTCC grid. That's brilliant. And you're so right. Without the tools in the trade, without the, the women in the trade, then why would others want to join you? I think if we can work together as a community, get those right tools, the suits, the the, the safety aspects, ultimately that is there to, to keep you safe during a race. and. If you were to have have an incident on the grid, you know, we need to make sure that people are comfortable that they are going to come out of that. And without those basic, and it is basic, it's PPE tools in place, then people will be more hesitant to join a sport. So I think that's a really important thing. And if anyone out there has got any connections with people who may be able to get us in the right direction to doing that, um, I know one, of, and I say this all the time, one of my biggest things, I'd love to get the Chanel, the racing suit out there available. Um, not only would you have a great role model there with Chanel, but a, a brand out there that really could help her to excel, that'd be great. We've had some fantastic feedback from Jane, and um, thank you very much, Jane. She would like to help raise the issue of women in Formula One with the Minister for Women and Equalities. She'd like to make an introduction for us to Liz Truss. So that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, Jane would also like to help to raise the profile in the FSB Women in Enterprise. Um, please do let us know, Jane, if we can join you there and perhaps Chanel would be able to give some time to do some, some talks and discussions. That would be fantastic. Thank you. And we've got some support for John. John, um, David is going to give you a call later. He wants to get you a free listing on the Wellness Wide um, and sends you much love. Um, thank you very much, David. That's amazing. Um, Ian's posed a question. He wants to know, going into the new season, Chanel, what is the thing you're most looking forward to and also the least? I love going into a new season because I mentioned the budget for me. All my other teammates and all my rivals are out there testing every day and I turn up to the race and I do what I can do on that weekend because I don't have the financial support in order to do that. So for me, I'm most looking forward to throwing myself in the deep end and throwing myself out there and seeing what I can do. I, I love proving people wrong and proving people that with a little bit of confidence and a little bit of fight, you can do it. And that's what I'm most looking forward to. However, I'm not sure if there's something I'm not looking forward to. I, I love a lot about motorsport, um, but probably, probably if we get any um, any snow, I know there's some snow forecast, so I hope not. Fingers crossed, because uh, I don't think I'm up for for racing in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Chanel, we have another question for you from Brian Hall. 
why do you think you have the ability to be so good? Do you have to have a no fear attitude? How much of it is great training and how much is innate ability? I believe in myself because of the people around me. I think being involved, I was very lucky to have such a supportive father growing up. And although he couldn't financially support me, he could support me in so many other ways of teaching me never to give up and to go out there. And no matter what tools you have, whether that's more or less than someone else, you can still do the same thing. Because at the end of the day, it's a case of going into that fight or flight mode, going into that corner. Don't worry about what's gonna happen because it will happen when you're in that corner. Just try your best. The worst that can happen is you can spin out and hit a wall. You get up and you try again. And this is why I think it's so important to be connected with the students because it's that getting up, trying again, no matter what happens, no matter what comes your way. Because we've been in the situation before where the car has been involved with an accident and we haven't got the funds to carry on, but we do what we can to get back out there and we've always managed it. So it's that not giving up and carrying that across, that message. It's It's definitely... A sport where I like I like to inspire everyone else to just not have that fear just go in into it throw yourself in that deep end because you never learn anything about yourself otherwise uh, so true Chanel yeah. John we have some questions coming in for you thick and fast thank you to everybody out there who's posing us questions Anna Wilkinson would like to know John and um, we all know that the work you're doing is amazing but do you plan to take CDS nationwide if you do, what additional support do you need from us here to make your dreams come true? Thank you, Anna. Yes, I do. Um, like Chanel and as Ian Wade just put in the comments, we've got to come out of our comfort zone. We've got to come out of Kent. We've had contact with people up and down the country who need community driving school in their communities. Now, if I was a billionaire, it wouldn't be a problem. I'm not. What we need is we need to establish secure, secure sound with people within the communities that we're going to be hitting. I know that we, we're looking at Bristol because that's where Chanel is based. We're looking at Eastley where we've got David. But we need people to step up to say, I'll fund a car in that area. I, I can help put you in touch with people in this area. We also need to establish contacts with charities and good causes in that area because we only accept pupils as referrals from charities. I get emails daily. Oh, you give free driving lessons. I, I Can I have them? Well, I don't know you. I'm sorry. In this cynical world, we've got to look and say, no, so we need, we only take referrals from charity partners. So we need to establish that. We need to establish if there's a decent driving instructor in that area. I'm not saying everyone's bad, I'm not by any stretch, but there are um, rogues out there, there are, and that's just a fact of life. And I wanna ensure that every CDS instructor has been safeguarding, tr guarded, trained, unlike every other instructor on the road, but we need to, for, we need contact. And if people, if there's a rich philanthropist out there, or you know one, um, then if, if we add a few hundred grand, we can we can help Chanel and we can grow CDS. That's what we're looking for. Yes, we do want to go national. Thanks, John. Chanel, TJ would like to know, being one of the races who doesn't have a huge amount of funding, does it make you work harder, do you think? De definitely. Definitely, because I know I've got more to lose out there than anyone else. Um, it's a challenge, but what would motorsport be without a challenge and what, what would I be fighting for if there wasn't a challenge and this is carrying across within my career is that one I'm a female in a male dominated world two I come from a normal background and so I want to show all the kids out there who are looking up to sport whether that be motorsport whether that be you want to be a hairdresser and you're a young male and you're thinking that's a female dominated world no matter what you start with you can do it and that is the message we're carrying across and this is why sponsorship is so vital for me in order to carry on is to carry that message for other people and i really do think it would make a massive difference to a lot of young kids out there in the world exactly exactly there you know we're in 2021 why do we still allocate certain roles to certain genders and um, we need to break down those barriers and chanel you're doing such a fantastic job yeah it's the only sport where men and women can compete on a level playing field apart from equestrian so 
we need to make the most of that and we need to make the most of it being one of the only sports left where we can compete as equals well said well said we've got a question from david um john and chanel are both part of the sports business club and um, they fund community driving school with monthly monthly donations because john is amazing they would like to welcome a podcast to their business members so i'm sure david we can have that discussion um, and get that sorted for you that's amazing thank you very much john who was your role model um, whoever it was, they deserve a huge pat on the back. Um, great work, my friends. Keep it up. And that comes from Dave at Koi Sports. Thank you, Dave. Um, Dave, that's a good good point, actually. My role model, wow, it's difficult. When, when you've had a broken background, you look outside of the immediate family. Um, for me, um, I guess Martin Luther King Jr. is one of my heroes. He's a man who just wanted to be treated like a human being. And if we, can all, if we all had that, yeah, that's my goal as well. Whether you're male, female, black, white, brown, let, let's, we, we just want to be treated as humans. Life's tough enough, why make it hard? Absolutely, absolutely. We've got a message here from Rick. He works with people who have mental health issues. Can SEK and CDS work together in any way? He would love to refer people to you, John. I think that's certainly a discussion to be had. Um, yeah, a, a little secret about our Rick. I'm teaching him to drive. Now, I'm sure, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, Rick had an absolute fear of getting in the car to learn to drive. The biggest obstacle he had for driving was overcoming his own his own head. He's now at a stage where he's test ready, but COVID has put a block on that. And I've been really proud to be part of his journey. And Rick, you inspire me as much as anyone, mate, with what you've overcome and how you've dealt with life. So love you, bro. Sam would like to know how he can help raising money for CDS. He has a passion for fundraising and would love to help out more. Well, Zoe, we've got a long list of things, haven't we? We have indeed, we have indeed. Um, Sam, any event you want to hold in the name of CDS, um, we can support you in, in making those donations come through. Um, perhaps we should have a conversation later. It'd be great to know what ideas you've got. Thank you very much. Um, Anne would like to know, Chanel, how do you look after yourself? Self-care and mental well-being very, um, in a very pressurised role. She's a massage therapist and would love to help others with stress, relaxation, muscles and the mind. Yeah, I find it difficult sometimes to begin with when I first started racing to mentally look after myself because I don't think I quite realised the impact it was having, um, the comments that were being made and the the overall stigma of the sport and why I was there was difficult to deal with. Um, but I think over the years, I've definitely learned I use the gym as an outlet. I use that a lot. And I'm also lucky to know a lot of people who I can talk to at any point. It hasn't been an easy journey, but it's definitely getting easier. And I do believe in sometimes just taking that time out, meditation, wellness, stretching the body, just looking after yourself is very, very important. And uh, recovery is big within motorsport mentally and physically because you got that adrenaline hit on the weekend. And then that Monday morning, even when I was back at school, I'd wake up, I'd have school at seven o'clock in the morning, but I would be on a low because the adrenaline's gone. And it's just keeping yourself, maintaining that personal level of happiness and contentness that is difficult within the sport. Jim Albert would like to know, Chanel, what's your ultimate goal? Is it F1? I like to see where the road takes me. I'm open to any opportunity. Obviously, F1 is everyone's dream, I think. Very, very expensive route in Formula One. And my passion lies with Tintop. So I think either Le Mans, British GT, or the British Touring Car Championship would be my ultimate goal, because that's where the lack of support is for females. Absolutely. Um, in addition to role models, how can, how else can the racing authorities further break down barriers and reach out to become a more inclusive sport, do you think, Chanel? I think it would be more on the side of just promoting variety in motorsport. At the moment, it's if you type in race driver on Google Images, it will just come up with very similar looking males. And 
there is a lack of black racing drivers, female racing drivers, disabled racing drivers who are coming up the ranks, but there's very, very few of us. There are only 6% of females that held race licenses when I started. And there aren't many race licenses in the UK. So that's a very, very small percentage. And I think it's by allowing that avenue to be that little bit easier for people to come and join in that would make that change in the world. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, John, Katie from We Are With You is a nationwide charity and they would love to support and refer. How do we get the ball rolling? Um, we have a conversation. Um, if we got contact details, so if you Katie. And I will make sure that we get them. <laughs> if, if we can have them, Katie, we will have some further discussions because the funding we have is very limited. We have to be um, careful with, with the money that we've got. Um, so if we look at ways of joint funding, fundraising, then let, there's no reason why we can't work together as a national um, collective. Um, the, the name of Community Driving School wasn't picked by accident. It's there for a reason, because everybody involved, everybody, is part of our community. Whether you're a racing driver like Chanel, one of our pu pupils like Rebecca and Sophie, or whether you're just an amazing good Terminator like Zoe Bowles, um, you're all part of our community and family. I'd like to ask for no more questions to be popped in the, the chat just for now. Um, we'll get through these last ones, but then I do want to try and get Rebecca back on stage for, for you to hear her story. Um, so Chanel, where do you do your supercar instructing? Is it just in Bristol or around the UK? And how can people find out more about it? I instruct all around the UK. So I work normally at Brixton and Donington Park, Brands Hatch. I work at most of the UK's leading motorsport venues. Um, you can find out more on my LinkedIn page, Chanel Drew, or you can find more at Chanel Drew Racing on Instagram or Facebook. Um, feel free, I believe some of my details are in the main, the main group. You can find me and my email there and you can find out more information. Uh, but yeah, I believe that instructing is a way that I can change the world every day. Instructing isn't easy. When people see me as their instructor and they've booked on to drive a Lamborghini and I'm half their age and uh, a young girl, they probably think, what do you know about this car? And I just use every day as my instructing career to change someone's perspective and to make someone less prejudiced of who they who they receive when they first meet. Absolutely. And TJ would also like to know, would you move abroad to further your career? Definitely. I, <laughs> I must say it, there are some very um, freezing, bitterly cold race mornings in the UK and I think my dad would much rather stand on a pit wall in Spain than in the UK watching me go around. It's all good being in the car because it's nice and warm in there, it's toasty, but when, when you're spectating it can uh, be a little bit chilly sometimes. Wouldn't we all, Chanel, wouldn't we all? I'm sure we'd all come to Spain to watch you race. <laughs> Um, Cara, shout out to you. Thank you. She is so pleased to be hearing about all of this encouragement and positivity for CDS. She'd like to know how she can get involved and contribute. That's amazing. Um, Brian Hall would like to know, are we getting involved with the crowdfunding Kent initiative? Um, with so many supporters, it seems a great way to raise funds. And the answer is, Brian, yes, we will be. Um, more to follow on that. I hope to see you all um, back on there supporting us. That would be amazing. And last but certainly not least, John, people want to know where they can get hold of one of your CDS hoodies. I didn't quite come out. So CDS hoodies. Our... CDS hoodies. I was hoping to announce that the shop would be online this week, um, but we're still waiting for it to come up online. Um, they will be available. There'll be t-shirts, polo shirts, um, hoodies and sweats. And we're giving 10% of the profit towards Chanel's racing team. Um, and so if people up and down the country want to buy them, it would be absolutely awesome um, because we, we love Chanel and we want her to succeed because she's been very brave in stepping up to what we're doing. And I can see Rebecca's on here now. So. I shall shut my mouth. Absolutely. Thank you, John. Thank you, Chanel. Thank you for everyone that's put their questions to the, the two. Um, they've been amazing. It's been great to learn more. But without further delay, and thank you, Rebecca, for trying so hard to get on to see us. Um, over to you. The floor is yours. 
so sorry that it took me so long, guys. <laughs> me and technology don't get along. But can you hear me, John? Bonus. So my name's Rebecca. In 2008, my mum went in to have a back operation. That went very wrong. She went from a very healthy, active 40-year-old mental health nurse to a disabled, clinically depressed person. Four weeks later, my grandfather, who was my absolute world, killed himself by jumping off the white cliffs of Dover. I lost a huge part of myself. And then when I did try to come back, I was sexually assaulted. I was very scared of men. Then I met John and started to gain confidence build my family and friends and started to trust people. To see the change in me, I have never had a driving instructor and there have been a few driving instructors that is, that have helped me so much. That is the difference between CDS and the big driving schools. Community driving cares for you for the whole person, not just the money. It lifts your spirits and lets you know you can do it if you want it. My life has changed forever and I'll always be looking forward and not backwards, thanks to John and CDS. I am proud to say that I am part of the CDS family and I always will be. Thank you for listening and giving me your time. I hope that this gives you an insight into some of the issues that we face as pupils and how much CDS means to us and how much it helps us. So thank you and please, even if you can donate a little, do it. But from the bottom of my heart, I thank you so much for supporting CDS and helping us, not the company. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rebecca. It's been great to finally get you up on this stage to tell your story because it is such an important one. And a lot of what you say there is is just so familiar to so many of our peoples. And, you know, to have the support of CDS, I know has has changed your life. And, and that's what we're here for. Um, and it's great to be a part of. Um, we are closing our presentation and um, thank you for all of those of you that are still here um, I'd like to just send some thanks around so thank you to John and um, for coming on and telling your story it's been amazing to hear to Chanel and to Sophie and to Rebecca and um, also thank you to our sponsors so this event has been sponsored by Community Driving School also Chanel Drew Racing and also Educational Life with John Turner so thank you very much the links to all of those websites are available on the floor plan and um, one in the center one on the top left and one on the top right if you click on those it will take you to the respective websites for you to find out some more and um, I'd also like to thank Graham Coast I'm not sure if he's here today but we are hosting this event via his his um, Remo account. So thank you very much for your generosity, Graham. It's been amazing. And I'd like to close the presentation and open the floor for all of you to have a chat with anybody that you've met today, um, further your relationships, and also come and find us. We can tell you anything that you need to know and answer any more of those questions that you have. Um, but from the bottom of my heart, and I'm sure John and Chanel and Rebecca, um, thank you for being here. It's been great to spend this time with you. Thank you so much. <laughs>